What's up guys, Steven here. Welcome back to a new video. So I'm a videographer and I rely on a lot of storage. Throughout the year, I tested out different NAS storage solutions from entry-level solutions to mid-range solutions, but also to really high-end solutions. So there could be a lot of reasons why you need a network-attached storage. So either you're a photographer, or videographer, and you just need a lot of space, or you want to do some media streaming at home and set up your own server, or you want to have your own private cloud and give access to family members or friends. Today in this review, we'll check out different devices in different price categories, and I will let you know what device is the perfect fit for you. All right, so before you're buying a NAS storage, you should think about, do you really need a NAS storage? Because modern modems usually have a USB port. I, for instance, I use a Fritzbox. Um, there are different Fritzbox uh, modems. This is the 6860, this is the 7530, and I personally use the 7590. This one has even two USB ports. So with the USB ports, you can connect USB drives and then configure them as NAS storage. And I'll quickly show you how that looks like and what you can do with it. The Fritz NAS solution is significantly slower than all other tested network storage. However, it is still sufficient for individual users or when it comes to only provide files for a few devices which have to be quickly available. It is unbeaten on the price. If you already have a Fritzbox, you only have to plug in a USB memory. The range of functions concentrates on the essentials. So Fritz NAS is not a competitor for multi-hundred euro expensive standalone NAS solutions. There are no special multimedia and backup functions, no file encryption, and no additional software catalogs that can be used to extend the functionality. However, the storage is easily accessible from the outside via your smartphone or PC, and there are basic functions for access management and the ability to integrate an additional cloud environment. All in all, this is a free feature for Fritzbox owners, and it's a great way to venture into the world of network storage. If you have no specific additional requirements, you will be happy with the range of features you offer in the long term. So if you want to go one step further and have real hard drives and also have a RAID system to back up your data and also have cloud access, then I can recommend a really cheap one. This is the Sixel. You can get it for roughly 100 euros. Very cheap solution. It works. You can back up your data and I'll quickly show you now how it works and how the interface looks like. The next NAS system is a little bit hard to pronounce. In the videos they call it Saxel or something, so if I pronounce it wrong, sorry for that. But the NAS 326 is the least expensive 2 bay NAS we have seen but it still has surprisingly decent performance. With a single gigabit connection, it's unlikely that you would see or feel much of a performance difference for most day-to-day -day operations. The NAS326 new user interface is a step forward, keeping it competitive with the big boys such as Synology and QNAP. The new version provides a desktop interface, downloadable packages, as well as sorted cloud features. For the least expensive entry-level 2-bay NAS, the NAS326 offers a lot of bang for the buck. You would have to spend more than double to move up in the charts to a higher performing, more fully featured NAS. We can really recommend this device if you are looking for a very cheap system, have your own HDDs and just want a RAID 0 or RAID 1 backup solution. We have been using it with the Toshiba N300 drives in dual 4TB config and it was working really reliable. All right guys, so we're now logged in into the NAS again and the storage is up and running. So if we check out the storage manager right over here, as you can see, we have volume on RAID. Basically, um, we have 3.6 terabytes and it's RAID zero. So, well, you have a second hard disk, which basically stores the same data as the first um, hard drive. As you can see, I have my external SSD connected with the rear USB, then also an USB drive. And on the front, you can also connect the USB drive and also copy the data to the NAS. So this is pretty, pretty easy to use. So um, the dashboard looks like it would have a lot of features, but actually it doesn't have too many features. So we have a status center, which displays um, status about your NAS, um, as you can see, CPU, memory and all stuff. You have an app center where you can download additional apps, but it's kind of limited. Download and upload manager, a backup planner where you can do scheduled backups, file browser, um, photo, music and video. So basically, um, as you can see, the file browser here looks like an FTP. So it's also very, very basic and it's a little bit slow. Music video right over here. Then here we have the cloud. As you can see, you 
can access, you can do cloud access, you can also use an app for that. Um, there are also some video tutorials and a knowledge base included, just in case if you don't know how to use the NAS. And then there is still um, space for other additional apps you may want to install. Here, once again, um, as you can see, everything healthy, one user locked in, CPU and RAM. So it's a pretty basic dashboard, but offers you all the options you want to have from a very basic NAS system. Now, once again, one step further, you can have a big system here like the Western Digital MyCloud PR4100. This one here is a pretty big system. It also has two power ports, two ethernet ports. So just in case something is wrong, like um, a PSU fails, it's still up. So it's a solution that always works. We have also cloud storage, and this one here is very easy to use. So if you want to have a kind of professional cloud, but you don't want to configure a lot, then Western Digital has made a really good solution. And I'll now show you how that looks like. The Western Digital PR4100 is an incredibly solid NAS. It's powerful and upgradable for professional use, while at the same time it's simple enough for non-techies. It just works, and be it for home or office or a little bit of both. The PR4100 is based on a quad-core Pentium N3710 processor with 4GB of DDR3L RAM, which is upgradable to 16GB of RAM if you decide that 4GB is insufficient for your needs. The unit comes with three USB 3.0 ports for connecting other devices to the PR4100 and it supports four hard drives in various RAID configurations. Also it comes with dual Ethernet and dual power ports for extra safety. It also features a front USB port with a copy backup button which can be really convenient. The Western Digital PR4100 has a really simple setup and ease of use on its side. If you are a creative pro, you want a product that requires no fuss and works out of the box, and the PR4100 is the perfect fit for you. The dashboard is really simple. At home, you can see your total capacity. Right now we have 6 terabytes. In there we have 4 2 terabyte drives. So we can quickly check out the RAID setup here under storage. So here on the storage, you can see your RAID profile. Currently, we are running um, the NAS storage in RAID 5, so you get most of your storage, but you also um, still have the security of your data. You can see the disk status right over here, so we have all the two terabyte drives at 30 degrees with good health. Here you can also create ISCSI targets, and we have volume virtualization. So well, uh, under backups, this is really easy. You can do automatic USB backups when you connect something. You can do remote backups, you can do internal backups from a system, you can do cloud backups, and you can also do camera backups. The cloud access is also very easy to use, so you can connect to the cloud from all kind of um, devices, from your tablet, from your smartphone, from your computer, and here you can configure the access accounts. Under shares, you can see which folders you have shared. So we have a tech magnet folder for the tech magnet account, we have a public account where we can share some public stuff, we have time machine backups, and all that can be configured right over here, and you can configure as many folders as you want. Under users, you can configure your users, so right now we have the admin account and the tech magnet account. And here under home, you have an overview over your NAS device, so here you can check the health, um, the current storage, network activity, users which are locked in, and also which apps are currently running. So regarding the apps, um, it's very limited, so we have HTTP downloads, FTP downloads, P2P downloads, and a web file viewer. So well, that's basically it. Here under apps, you can once again see um, the details for all the apps. So you can put in here um, the configuration and it's very limited. You cannot install any additional apps, but um, also it's very easy to use. So if you're looking for a NAS storage that should be, uh, that should have cloud access, should be very easy to use, then this is the right NAS storage for you. Last but not least, here in settings under media, you can um, switch on the DLNA media server or you can also run an iTunes server. So if you switch that to on, you have to configure everything and then it's up and running. Really easy to use. Now, if you're a professional photographer, I would recommend getting something like the Synology. It is still affordable, but packs a quad-core processor, upgradable RAM, NVMe slots so we can put in two SSDs, you have two Ethernet ports, ESA down the back. So basically there are a lot of things you want to have as a professional, also you can install various applications on it and it's a really really powerful system. I'll now walk you through the features and show you how it looks like. The Synology DS918 Plus is the newest edition of Synology's 4-bay Tower Plus series NAS. This model offers four 3.5-inch bays in addition to two M.2 NVMe slots on the bottom for caching. 
Network connectivity is provided through two 1GB Ethernet ports. The DS918 Plus is designed for small and medium-sized businesses looking up for a NAS that provides impressive performance. This NAS comes equipped with the Intel Celeron J3455 quad-core Celeron processor and 4GB of RAM expandable up to 8GB and it's quoted to deliver up to 225MB of read and 221MB of write speeds for encrypted files via the AESNI hardware encryption engine. Additionally, the DS918 Plus can concurrently transcode two channels of H.265 and H.264 4K videos, making it an ideal solution for creative professionals. Taking up most of the space on the back of the NAS are two 92x92mm fans and below the fans on the left side there are two 1GB Ethernet ports, an eSATA port and a power port along with the reset button. On the right side you will find a Kensington security slot and another USB 3.0 port. We have even tested it with the 14TB Ironwolf drives from Seagate and the speeds have been really good. Overall, the Synology DS918 Plus would make a great addition for any small business environment or creative like me. And on top of that, Synology also offers great and easy to use apps to access your NAS from any mobile device. Alright guys, so now let me show you the Synology interface. Now you can log in by just putting in the IP of your NAS into the browser or just use any of the Synology applications and this also works on your mobile phone. Then first of all, when you log into the dashboard, you will get a system health monitor, which shows you that everything in your NAS is okay, your IP, CPU and memory consumption, and if there are any issues, you will get a notification. Then there is the main menu, which offers access to the most used features like file station, storage manager, and also the control panel. Then there's the package center, which is really cool because here you can actually install new applications to bring new features to your NAS. And this ranges from a team viewer server to Plesk media server, cloud services, mail servers, proxy servers. So really a lot of stuff. You can run VPN services. Really, this is a basic standalone system that can run and do a lot of things. And there are some links down below in the description where you can check out what applications are supported and if you actually need all the things. Then there's the control panel which basically um, gives you options over the NAS like you can define users and groups, there's connectivity, you can configure external access and also update and restore so if there are any updates you can do all that here over the interface. The file station is basically just like an FTP where you can upload, download, create, delete stuff and very easy to use. You can also do that from your mobile phone. In the main menu you will also find a lot of apps to easily configure and manage your NAS also if you're a non-techy person. There is easy internet to basically configure access from the outside, there is storage manager for managing your drives, there's an ISCSI manager and also an easy tool to set up a media server. You can also connect external devices over USB like we use a USB drive to copy pictures but you can also connect USB SSDs or USB hard drives. And sometimes it's not really easy to configure your NAS for external access, but with the tools provided it really works like a charm. You also have plenty of more tools if you want to dig a little bit deeper, like a log center where you can check out what's going on on your NAS. And in general, the user interface is very customizable, easy to use and it's lightweight. That means it's really fast, there are no lags in there and this is something that is really important for me. So in my opinion, if you are not a really technical person but you want to have a NAS with plenty of features, then Synology offers here a really great package. So as a high-end user and videographer, I can really recommend the QNAP. So this one here is really quality over quantity. We have lots of Thunderbolt ports, we have PCI slots so you can upgrade it. There's a real CPU inside, it's upgradable RAM up to 32 gigabytes, two SSD slots. So this is a real, real big monster. There are plenty of connectors, even an HDMI connector to connect it to your, to your TV. You can do streaming, you can edit straight from it. So it's a really powerful machine and I'll now show you how that looks like. If you want to go the extra mile, you can get a QNAP, which I'm using with my Huawei MateBook X Pro. The TVS 472 XT is a 4 bay NAS that can also be equipped with two M.2 NVMe SSDs for faster transfer speeds. A PCIe slot is available for a graphics card, faster media transcoding or Ethernet adapters with up to 40 gigabit speeds. The other PCIe slot is occupied by an expansion card with a pair of Thunderbolt 3 ports. 
Beside TB3 ports, this NAS also comes with a 10 gigabit and two 1 gigabit ports, all of which can be teamed if you have a compatible switch. There's also an HDMI 2.0 port for 4K media playback with a refresh rate of up to 60 Hz. The TVS 472XT costs a lot, but it's so much more than just a NAS featuring a couple of TB3 ports. It can be really a fully featured multimedia and surveillance station, takes a graphics card for faster media encoding, or can be used as a standalone device if necessary because of the integrated HDMI port. And the feature list doesn't stop here. As video editor I need a lot of fast and affordable storage space. And also with my Matebook having Thunderbolt 3, it's just amazing as I get really good speeds and I can even edit directly on the NAS. I personally don't believe that a normal user will ever need all the features of this NAS, which is why it mostly addresses small and moderately sized businesses. Anyhow, if you're looking for a NAS system that can do literally everything, the QNAP is the way to go. It runs really reliable, but also has a long boot time. I also tried hosting my WordPress site on it and it even gets that job done. Same for my mail server. So if you're a personal business owner but also want a media server or much more, the QNAP is simply perfect and works perfectly by using it with the QNAP apps. But also Synology is offering really good apps for the NAS. Alright guys, so now let me show you the QNAP NAS. So this is the desktop on my Huawei Matebook X Pro and it's always filled with projects I'm currently editing. Whenever a project is finished, I just put it on my NAS, which is linked here as a network drive. So here we have the QNAP. As you can see, plenty of projects in there. Some I still have to edit, some are already finished. And for instance, the NAS project right over here includes tons of footage and benchmarks and everything. So we have been working on this project for months and that's why we store all the over 100 gigabytes here on the NAS. So I could also easily edit from the NAS because it has Thunderbolt 3 and I can access it also over the QSync client, QSync applications, but every NAS manufacturer like also Synology is offering really great apps to access their NAS. So well, usually when I go into the interface, I have here a shortcut for it. It logs me directly into the IP. I just log in and this is how it looks like. As you can see, um, the loading time sometimes takes a little bit, but this NAS has plenty of features, so that's okay. Well, first of all, we have here the control panel and in there you can do plenty of settings, your network settings, firmware updates. I usually don't look into it quite often because everything is set up and it's running fine. You have notifications so you can see what has changed, if there are any errors, warnings. I, I have some other um, SSD attached to it, like my Western Digital one, the Sand disk extreme ssd or um, thunderbolt 3 so this is really great if you have a lot of thunderbolt 3 devices so also you have an app center right over here where you can install plenty of applications i have a plask media server running um, i can even host websites on it i can have my mail server on it same as the synology basically but um, this one has also a dedicated hdmi port to connect it to your tv or something to really use it as a standalone device and the functionality of it is basically unlimited you have so many things you can do as you can see even dolphin in here um, google drive so many things and video GPU drivers if you uh, want to add a GPU this is really crazy so first of all you have here like some kind of advisor you have a bin where you can see your delete data um, you have here your own account where you can um, basically do some options on your NAS, you can locate your NAS, and you have a health monitor like a little dashboard which shows you um, that the system temperature is okay, fans are running, that the RAM is not overloaded, and yeah, as you can see, um, we have the Iron Wolf in here, so the 14 and two terabyte, because I need to get some more disks to really fill it up. The rest is in the Synology, and so far the QNAP is a really, really powerful NAS, but you really need to know what you're doing, because the possibilities are unlimited. So you can, for instance, have a basic FTP file station, get access, make your own cloud, or you can even run it as a standalone device. So really, really great. All right, guys, so we're now here at the end of this video and just a very quick summary and my personal feedback. So if you just want to share a little bit of data in your network, there is no need to buy a NAS storage. You can just pick up a good modem like a Fritzbox, connect a few USB hard drives, and then give access to your family members or even to your friends if you configure it properly. So this is one of the cheapest solutions. But also if you have a NAS storage, you really need to have a modem which you can trust. And I only trust the Fritzbox, it's really stable. I know it's 
It's way more expensive usually than other modems because while well, it's made in Germany, there's a lot of R&D behind it. And really, if you're looking for a NAS storage, then I can recommend the Fritzbox. So let's switch over to the NAS storages. If you just want to have, um, you know, a RAID system where you can backup your data and for backup safety, then it makes sense to get an entry-level NAS here like the Sixel. It's very easy to use. You can backup your data one-to-one, -one, but you cannot do some advanced RAID systems or streaming. Then if you want to have something which has more cloud features, is more at the professional use, then I would recommend the Western Digital MyCloud. So you can get this one in different configurations with also lots more spaces. You have two Ethernet ports, two power ports. So just in case if something breaks down, you always have a backup. It's a very good cloud solution, very easy to use, and you can get access to all your family members on your smartphone. And it's a very advanced one, but also more expensive. If you are a content creator, like a photographer, like my friend Mo, then the Synology is a really good fit. It offers you all the features you want to have as content creator. It's not probably the best for media streaming, but still really good if you want to back up your data, if you want to access your data fast. And also if you want to have professional features, it's still at an affordable price level. If you want to go the extra mile and have the total overkill, then you can go for the QNAP right over here. So it has an HDMI port. You have lots of Thunderbolt ports, which is for me personally really important because I have a lot of Thunderbolt devices, external Thunderbolt SSDs. I connect to my notebook over Thunderbolt and Thunderbolt really is replacing all my connectors in my life. So then it re really makes sense to have an advanced system like that one. The QNAP also like the Synology um, has SSD cache, so you can um, put in NVMe SSDs. Also on both, you can upgrade the RAM. So you can really install a lot of applications from different mail servers to streaming services. So there's really a lot of stuff you can do on this NAS services. So the QNAP is really high end, but if you want to have the best of the best, but also spend a lot of money, then I can really recommend it. I use all together with the Fritzbox just to have um, always up guarantee and that the network is working fast. And so far I'm really happy with that and soon we'll bring you an update video. I'm currently working on my new PC setup for the Blackmagic um, editing station. So that will use also the NAS storages and I will keep you updated also on, this, on a few speed tests. So big thanks for watching guys. Let me know down below in the comments what NAS storage you are using. Um, if you have questions, then just let me know for what you're using it and what your price range is, and I will try to reply as soon as possible. So as always guys, big thanks for watching. I'm Steven from Tech Magnet, and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a nice day and bye.